line that separates priests and prostitutes is infinitesimally small. None of us go out to the streets and meet a stranger. We go out to the streets and we meet a part of ourselves. I walked the streets of Nashville for 26 years. I've walked streets all over the United States. In the beginning, I was with a pimp. Uh, he sold me a dream. At times, being with him was a lot better than being at home. You know, I've been to gentlemen's clubs, escort services, and I know that from all them places, I have never met a woman who wasn't in some kind of pain in order to do that. Sexual abuse for the women who are residents of Magdalene on average happened between the ages of 7 and 11. I had a lot of bad things happen to me as a child that are not supposed to happen to children. I was taught things that most children wouldn't know about. I don't sleep well. The bed is, is a bad spot for me. I was molested at an early age, starting with my grandfather coming to my bed. Coming up as a child, I was um, constantly molested by my own uncle. I watched people get raped at my age, right in my house. I watched men come and take advantage of my mom. I was threatened to keep quiet. Early age, um, I experienced um, being taken into a closet by um, a relative. I was in seven different foster homes before I was adopted. Each home I was molested. Um, never had a sense of um, what love really means. My mom remarried when I was about 10, and that stepfather molested me when I was age 11. He told me it was my fault uh, and that I was a bad girl. And then the vicious cycle started. While I do not compare my story to any of the women who come through Magdalene, after my father died and in the church, I experienced um, sexual abuse for a couple years. I was raped when I was like 19. That was my first encounter with a man. The things that happened when I ran away from home was, I didn't even think those kind of things happened to people physically. I ended up being the witness to my father's murder, you know, right in front of me. It's so vivid in my mind. There are times when I can almost hear and, and feel and smell the way that particular day smelled. And, and like when he died, um, when he was shot, when he fell, I ran over to him. And he had partially got caught up under him. So that brought on a lot of more fears. It's really, it was really really tough coming up. I would consider it hell. Um, I would just consider it hell. I needed drugs to deal with the shame. When I tried drugs for the first time, I felt like that was my escape. I've been addicted ever since I was maybe 11 years old, and now I'm 57, so the vast majority of my life I've been addicted. And I carried the horrible things that he did to me for years, and it led me to a horrible life of addiction, uh, prostitution, abuse, trafficking, being on the streets. And that is the worst feeling in the world to be told. To pull up on a street and, uh, and have to walk down that street and get in a car with someone you don't know, and you know that you have to do it, and you can't come back without any money. But then, uh, there came the beatings and stuff, and I have like a, a road map in my head that I didn't realize I had until after I had the breast cancer and lost all my hair and really got to see how bad the beatings really were. We didn't get to go to the doctor. We, we got our head put under uh, cold water until the bleeding stopped, and then we were put back out. I don't know what at, at what point I hit bottom, because it seemed like every day was a bottom day. I was dead inside. Um, I was spiritually dead, mentally destroyed. I was broken. And then God did for me what I couldn't do for myself. And I got arrested that day. And jail was fine with me. It really was because um, that was a safe spot for me. No one was going to rape me. Uh, I didn't have to get out and get any money. Somehow I just knew that I had to go to Magdalene. I went to jail and the judge made me go to treatment. 
what was 28 days going to do for me after being on, you know, being out there for 28 years? I mean, I was beat. I was beat down. I was tired. So I went to the treatment center, and this girl came in, and she was telling me about the Magdalene program. They called me to court, and that day Magdalene House was there, and they said, we're picking her up today, and I was just like, it's real. <laughs> Magdalene offers women who are coming off the streets and out of lives of prostitution, addiction, and trafficking, free housing for two years. And that's really where my healing journey began. They kept telling me that I was going to meet this priest. The lady who founded this program was this Episcopal priest, and I was like, oh, Lord, she is not going to want me to be in her place if she knows some of the stuff that I've done. Being a part of this community, I realized what connects us is vastly more profound and deep than anything that separates us. The way that the Magdalene community is set up, that we love everybody and that we judge no one and we love unconditional. Love is the most powerful force for social change in the world. That's what made me have the freedom to start digging deep and healing from some of the scars. I was always running and since coming to Magdalene, I have not felt the need to just run. When I was in Magdalene, therapy meant reliving some of the horrible stuff that I had pushed down. But I think every time I talk about it, every time I shed tears about it, um, that I heal a little more. It has been painful, but the most beautiful experience of my life. I think any time that we are freed up enough to tell our story, it's healing and empowering. The next year I started to grow and bloom and I'm at Thistle Farms and turns out I'm a little bit smart, which everyone always told me I was stupid my whole life. Sent me to Belmont for computer school. You can go to school on Fridays and still get paid. And so I'm on the sales team now. We established Thistle Farms, a national bath and body care company, so that women could become economically independent. I'm doing great. I have my own place my very first own place, um, and it's cute. You know, people really do want to see you do good, and that's something that I never knew. I never knew that any of this was possible. I never knew that anybody cared. It was the world against me, and it's so not that way. I wish that more places could open up like Magna. I know there's hope because I'm looking at me, you know, junkie addict like me, and I know there's hope. About 72% of the women who come into Magdalene are clean and sober two and a half years later. Magdalene is not really a treatment program. It's a community of women that are just like me. We can sympathize and empathize. It just gave me hope. I know I'm a survivor. I do what I can. I uh, speak out about injustices. I sell a lip balm, a candle. Magdalene has saved my life. I love speaking out for women. I just, I feel like that's my mission now. It gives me hope in everything that I've gone through to know that it wasn't for nothing. Every time I look into the face of women in the street, I can feel their pain because it's also my pain. But I also know the feeling of hope. And I pray one day that they will too. I definitely want to be a rock and I definitely want to let ladies know that it's okay to speak up. You know, when if you abuse, sexual abuse, mentally abused, physically abused, it's okay to speak up. I held it in for so long, but finally, you know, I'm letting it out, and I'm not ashamed. I think there are some things that, you know, you won't forget, but you can forgive and you can move on from them. I love the fact that I'm not a victim anymore. Uh, I was so stuck in that uh, victim role for so long. I had owned it, and that's why I love to say I'm a survivor now. I just like for the women to know that, that we can all do this and we can all do this together. I'm living proof of it. Love heals. I kind of relate myself to when the people in the Bible was walking in the wilderness and they was walking in service for 40 years. Well, for 26 years, I never could get out of a 10 block radius. But Magdalene and the sisters of Magdalene held on to me so closely that I made it through it. And another thing that I find really amazing, my father was a farmer, the farmer of crops. Now I am a farmer of people. I'm a thistle farmer. So I think that's really neat. Yay. There's a passage from Isaiah that says, everyone who thirsts come to the water. And that was written while people were still in exile.
This can be a place where people who thirst can come and they find women who are healing and they go back out and for a little while their thirst is sated. Take the tears in the careless words Take the fears in all the hurt And let's just make it long And let's just make it